السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Today إن شاء الله I'm going to talk about uh, the development of the um, vertebral column uh, I'm Dr. Dani Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansour University The objectives uh, of my presentation today is about following First, I'm going to remind you about uh, the vertebral column organization Uh, then we will uh, talk about the development of the vertebral column. Um, first, we will discuss the specialization of the mesoderm. Then the stages of development of the vertebral column, which includes the mesenchymal stage, the cartilaginous stage, and the ossification stage. And then we will talk about the fate of the notochord and the costal process at various regions. And finally, we'll talk about the anomalies of the vertebral column. Uh, for the organization of the vertebral column, as you can see from this uh, diagram, this is a side view of the spine. Uh, the vertebral column is made of a stack of bones called vertebrae. Uh, it extends from the skull down to the pelvis and is divided into regions. We have uh, the cervical region, including uh, seven vertebrae. Uh, thoracic region has uh, uh, 12 vertebrae. We call it the mid-back region. Uh, then the lumbar region, or the low back region, contains uh, five vertebrae. And uh, finally, the sacrum uh, lies below the lumbar region and is a solid mass of bones. Contains uh, or consists of five fused vertebrae, and finally the coccyx, which is the terminal segment of the column. Uh, what about the curves of the vertebral column? Uh, there are two types of curves. Primary curves appears in the fetus, and it is uh, concave anteriorly, like you see in this diagram. And then secondly, curvature appears early in childhood. When the baby is born, we have two of them. We have the uh, cervical curve, which is concave posteriorly. And another curve appears in the lumbar region. It's called the lumbar curve, which is also concave posteriorly. The cervical curve appears uh, to help the baby or to help the, the, the child to support his head. While the lumbar curve develops... Uh, when the baby wants to support his trunk uh, during standing and walking. So it helps uh, the child to support his upper trunk and body. And this is the final shape of the vertebral column curves in the adult, in this side view. These are the primary curves, uh, lies or are still present in the thoracic and uh, pelvic region. while the secondary curves appear in the cervical and lumbar regions. To remind you by the general structure of the vertebra, we have a body, which is uh, a mass of bone lies anteriorly, and it is the weight-bearing region. Of course, its uh, shape differs from region to region, the smallest in the cervical region and the largest size in the lumbar region. Posterior to the body, we have the neural arch. It's made uh, by two pedicles and two lamina. These are the pedicles here, and these are the laminae. And extends from the uh, vertebra processes. We have seven of them. We have the spine. Uh, lies Uh, posteriorly, also its shape and size differs from region to region. We have two transverse uh, processes on the sides, and we have uh, four articular processes, two superior and two inferior for articulation with the vertebra above and below. Also, we have what's called vertebral foramen, which lies posterior to the uh, body, and When the vertebrae stack one over the other, we have eventually the vertebral canal in which lies the spinal cord and its meninges.
So how can you differentiate the different types of uh, vertebrae according to the reason? We have the cervical vertebrae characterized by the small body and the presence of the foramen transversarium, this foramen or hole in the in its transverse process, and also characterized by the its pivot spine. Uh, the mid back region we have the thoracic vertebrae characterized by the presence of facets small area for articulation with the ribs so uh, we have the facets over the body at the side of the body and also at the tip of its transverse process here um, in the lumbar region or the low back region these are the lumbar vertebrae characterized by the big kidney shaped body then we have the sacrum here, mass of one, formed of five fused vertebrae, and looks like it, but very small is the coccyx. Uh, for the development of the uh, vertebral cola, first uh, we should learn what's called by specialization of the mesoderm. What's meant by specialization of the mesoderm? Uh, back to this diagram, this is a cross section in the embryo. We have here the notochord. Overlying it lies the neural tube. You know, from my previous uh, presentation, we said that the notochord induces the overlying ectoderm to form the neural uh, tube. So, this is the notochord. Overlying it lies the neural tube. And this is the surface ectoderm. And these are the neural crest cells. Um, so the specialization of the mesoderm, its first sign is the appearance of the notochord. So the notochord, uh, it's part of the mesoderm. So when it appears, it is the first sign of specialization of the mesoderm. And then we have three collections of mesoderm appear lateral to the notochord. Again, this is the notochord in the midline. Overlying it lies the neural tube. And this is the surface ectoderm. Below we have the endoderm here. So in the middle we get the mesoderm, right? So the first uh, uh, sign of appearance of the mesoderm is the presence of the notochord in the midline. And on each side we have three collections of uh, mesodermal tissue on each side of it. Uh, we have the somites which is the para, part of the paraaxial mesoderm. This is the paraaxial mesoderm, then segmented into somites. Uh, lateral to it, we lies the intermediate mesoderm in this region. And laterally, we have double sheets of lateral plate mesoderm. Outer layer and the inner layer, or somatopleuric layer and splanchnopleuric layer. What concerns us here in the development of the vertebral cola is the somites or the paraaxial mesoderm. This is another picture, an electromicroscopic picture, to show the neural tube in the midline. Of course, beneath it lies the notochord. And we have on each side the paraaxial mesoderm and now segmented into somites. Okay, this is another diagram. You can see the notochord, you can see the overlying neural uh, tube, and lateral to them lies the somites. The somites then differentiate into the following. Dorsolateral part will form the dermatome and myotome. We call it the dermomyotomal part forms the skin and the underlying muscle and the ventromedial part we call it the sclerotome. The sclerotome uh, will eventually form the vertebral column. So in each side of the uh, notochord and neural tube we have 40 pairs of somites divided into uh, three parts. The sclerotome part forms here the vertebrae and the ribs. The dermatome will form the dermis of the skin 
of dorsal part of the body and the mitome will form the skeletal muscles of the neck, trunk and limbs. Again, this is another diagram showing the notochord. Overlying it lies the neural tube and this is the surface ectoderm. On each side of the notochord and the neural tube, we have the somite differentiated into the following regions. Dorsolateral, we have the dermomyotome, which will form the dermis of the skin and the muscles of the trunk and neck region and limbs. While ventromedial lies uh, the sclerotome. So during the fourth week of development, The mesodermal cells of the sclerotome migrate medially. Thus, the mesenchymal colon is formed. Uh, so, mesenchyme is it's just mesodermal cells, but still not differentiated yet. yet. That's why we call it mesenchymal colon. Again, uh, this is again the notochord. This is the neural tube. This is the surface. Ectoderm and this is the somite. The dorsolateral part is formed of the dermis and the mitome. So we call it the dermomitomal part of the somite. Uh, while the ventromedial part we call it the sclerotome. Okay, the sclerotome cells will just go or move medially to surround the notochord and the neural tube. And since the sclerotome um, are still undifferentiated cells, so we call this stage of development of the vertebral colon is the mesenchymal colon. Okay, uh, in this view, we have like a uh, LS section uh, of the embryo or of the somites. You can see here the neural tube, and it is surrounded by the uh, sclerotomic cells, like this. Uh, these blocks. Uh, are separated by less dense areas uh, containing the intersegmental arteries. So this block represents one uh, of the somites, and this is another somite, and this is another somite. Okay, if they are formed of um, sclerotome here, the light area, and the uh, dermomitome here, the dark area. Okay, and they are separated by less dense uh, segments or less dense area where you can find the intersegmental arteries. In a different view, this is the neural tube. Okay, this is the sclerotomic part of the somite here and here. And this is the myotome, the myotomes of the somites that will form the muscles later on. Uh, so what happened that each sclerotomic block differentiate into the following. Cephalic part means towards the head, uh, made of less condensed uh, tissue. And caudal part made of more dense condensed uh, part. That's why I highlighted it in light pink and dark pink here. Uh, when the spinal nerve grow, or um, come out of the neural tube and they traverse the sclerotomic block between the less uh, condensed part and the more condensed part or between the cephalic part and the caudal part in order to reach the mitomes to supply them. So they split this uh, sclerotomic block into two parts, cephalic part and caudal part. Then what happens that uh, the caudal half of one sclerotome joins the cephalic half of the next sclerotome. And again, this uh, caudal half of this somite or this sclerotomic block will join the uh, cephalic half of this sclerotomic block. Like this. So we have now bodies of the vertebrae are formed which are intersegmental in origin like each vertebra is formed actually of two uh, consecutive somites or two consecutive sclerotomic blocks 
thus allowing the uh, spinal nerves to travel between them to reach the muscles and also the muscles will bridge over the two vertebrae like this so they, they will be able to move your spine okay and this is uh, what happens in the uh, embryo and this is the final shape of the vertebrae right so we have here the notochord and behind it or above it lies the uh, neural tube so sclerotomic tissue like we said will surround the notochord and the neural tube when they surround the notochord they will form the body of the vertebrae and then when they uh, extend around the neural tube they will form a neural arch to contain the neural tube inside them. okay uh, they will form the pedicles here and the laminae of the vertebrae and when they fuse together they will form the spine or the spinous process of the vertebra and eventually some uh, processes come out of the of this so we end up with the presence of the transverse process and in the thoracic region we will also have the costal uh, process so from the body here extend to the transverse process posteriorly and the costal process will extend from this area anteriorly so how the intervertebral discs are formed to revise this diagram again this is the notochord and this is the original somite arrangement the medial part is made by the sclerotome okay and later to it lies the myotome and should be here the dermatome right then the sclerotome differentiate into cephalic part and caudal part cephalic part and caudal part cephalic part and caudal part um so the intervertebral discs develop from the mesenchymal cells between the cephalic and the caudal parts of the sclerotomic segments thus forming the intervertebral discs okay this is the sclerotome and each somite differentiate into a cephalic part and caudal part like this cephalic part and caudal part cephalic less condensed and the caudal more condensed parts and we said that uh, the caudal uh, part of one sclerotomic block moves and fuses with the uh, cranial part of the sclerotome next to it, thus forming the bodies of the vertebrae like this. So the remaining uh, intersegmental regions, still we have here. Mesenchymal cells in this region, the intervertebral discs will develop. So, what happens to the notochord inside the intervertebral discs? They will persist while those inside the vertebrae will degenerate. Then, uh, the notochord in the intervertebral region will undergo mucoid degeneration, becomes jelly like, and form what's called nucleus. Pulposes. Then the surrounding uh, mesenchymal tissue will circle around the nucleus uh, pulposes and form what's called annulus fibrosis to contain these jelly like materials within them. Thus, we end up with the uh, intervertebral disc which lies between two consecutive vertebrae here. It's form of a jelly material in the center. It's called the nucleus pulposus, made of the um, notochord, which undergone mucoid degeneration, and surrounded by layers of fibrous tissue. It's called annulus fibrosus. Also derived from the mesenchyme of the intersegmental uh, uh, sclerotomic blocks. Second stage of formation of the vertebral column is called the cartilaginous column. So the mesenchyme then transform into cartilage. So during the sixth uh, week of development, a chondrification centers appear 
Two centers appear in each centrum or the future body of the vertebrae and they fuse together at the end of the embryonic period. Uh, so we have a centrum or a body made of cartilage. Also two centers of chondrification appear in the neural arch and fuse with each other um, uh, and also with the centrum. Then chondrification spreads until all the vertebrae is made now of cartilage. Uh, after this, in like in two other weeks, we have uh, ossification of the vertebral column. So it appears during the eighth week of development by the appearance of three primary ossification centers: one at the centrum, and two on each half of the neural arch, and then five ossification uh, secondary centers appear after puberty um, one in, at the upper and the lower lips of the body one at each transverse process and one at the spine so ossification of the vertebral colon primary ossification appears in the eighth week of development by the three uh, ossification centers and after the uh, puberty we have five different secondary ossification centers, two at the body, two in each transverse process, and one at the spine. Again, what's the fate of notochord? The cranial end of the notochord uh, will form the basilar part of the occipital bone and the posterior part of the body of the sp sphenoid. So it will enter in the formation of the uh, part of the base of the skull. While the notochord inside the bodies of the vertebrae will degenerate, the only part that will persist is uh, in the intervertebral discs, where it undergo uh, mucoid uh, degeneration and form the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc. What about the costal processes fate? In the cervical region, okay, this is the body again. And this is the transverse process, the pink one. And this is the costal process, the blue one. In the cervical region, uh, the costal process will fuse with the transverse uh, process and form the anterior and lateral boundary of foramen transversary. While in the thoracic region, of course, it will elongate and form the ribs. Again, look at the blue one. The pink one is a transverse process, while the uh, blue one is the uh, uh, costal process. Uh, in the lumbar region, it will fuse with the transverse process and form the anterior part of the transverse uh, process. In the sacral region, uh, it will form the anterior portion of the ala of the sacral. Uh, finally, we end up with the anomalies of the vertebral column. Uh, the anomalies ranges from either failure of fusion of the two laminae. In this case, we end up with spina bifida with its various types, either spina bifida occulta, just we, you have a missing spine here and failure of fusion of the two laminae here. But the uh, spinal uh, cord or the spinal nerves and the meninges still in their place so we have spinal bifida occulta only presented on the surface of the skin by abnormal presence of tuft of hair or dimple or whatever sometimes we have a manifest presentation of the spina bifida okay by protrusion of the meningeal sac outside uh, the vertebral canal like this either just the meningeal sac in this case we call it meningocele or we end up with the presence of um, nerves or neural material inside the meningeal sac. In this case, we call it meningomyelocele. And this is, of course, associated with uh, severe neurological manifestation. Um, other anomalies for the vertebral column when we have failure of chondrification of one half 
of the vertebrae so we end up with hemi vertebra um, it takes many shapes okay this is the problem here this is a problem for this uh, vertebra you have lack of a uh, quadrification on one half of it so you end up with hemi vertebra or it in in this case uh, because uh, of the hemi vertebrae the spine has to tend to tilt to one side or to bend to one side or uh, the hemi vertebrae uh, could be in two consecutive uh, vertebrae so the bending of the spine would be manifest and severe so because of the hemi vertebrae we end up with bending of the spine or deformity of the vertebral column like this lateral kinking or lateral bending, uh, we call it scoliosis or exaggerated thoracic curve, we call it kyphosis. Sometimes uh, a person have abnormal number of lumbar vertebrae, uh, like this, this is the sacrum, this is the promontory of the sacrum. And we should have only four anterior sacral foramina, but you can see here five, right? And you can see the last lumbar vertebra fusing with the promontory of the sacrum. So in this case, we call it sacralization of the fifth lumbar vertebrae when the fifth lumbar vertebrae fuses with the sacrum. Uh, from the previous picture, this was complete fusion, and this one is partial fusion, only by the transverse process to the L. This is again partial fusion of the fifth lumbar vertebrae with the sacrum. We call this case sacralization of the fifth lumbar vertebrae. Or you have the opposite. We have what's called a lumbar lumbarization of the first sacral vertebrae. So look at the uh, sacral foramina, you only have three. Means that the first one just uh, split uh, from the rest of the sacrum, and now you end up with six lumbar vertebrae and on, only four uh, sacral vertebrae. In this case, we call it lumbarization of the first sacral vertebrae. This is the end of my presentation, and thanks for listening.